Put the guns down now and let us see your hands. Many of today's cops are not prepared for dangerous situations like this, in which a split-second hesitation could have cost a life. But those who are go through rigorous street survival training. Enrolled in a 16-hour comprehensive course, Rick Pfeiffer learns what it takes to make it, because when it comes to police work, there's much more than just a job at stake. Shoot, Don't Shoot, Tuesday at 11 on News 4 Buffalo. Tell break-ins are just part of the reason the number of shootings between cops and robbers is on the rise. That's making survival out on the street tougher and tougher for police officers. As News 4's Rick Pfeiffer reports in part one of his series, Shoot, Don't Shoot, more and more cops are having to make tough decisions whether or not they should shoot at someone else. Radio, 117, come in. Go ahead. Shots fired. Officer in trouble, officer in trouble on Jennings Road, all units respond code 3. By the time that radio call was broadcast, Erie County Sheriff's Deputy Robert Insolaco had become a police statistic, killed in the line of duty in a police gunfight. In western New York and nationwide, gunfights involving police are on the rise. A 16-year-old suspected car thief is in fair condition tonight after he was shot by a Buffalo police officer early today. The police shootings in Buffalo have sparked community concern. A Buffalo police officer has now been cleared in the shooting of a black teenager. That ruling comes from an Erie County grand jury. But how can we be sure that a police officer is acting properly when he draws his gun and fires? Police officer, don't move! The average length of a police shootout is 2.8 seconds, barely time to blink your eye, and the bullets fly at close range. Most of the uh, firefights are between a police officer and a suspect are between where you're sitting and where I am now. 23% of the time, police officers involved in a gun battle don't even shoot back. What we've seen is with a lot of our police officers is that all of a sudden, the bad guy comes out, fires, and the guy wants to give up. We have to get rid of that attitude. You have to have the fight back attitude. While rookies at the Central Police Services Academy receive street survival training, few police departments offer specific advanced schooling for veteran officers. The town of Hamburg Police Department is an exception. Well, uh, we put a lot of importance on it. If you're going to be firing your weapon, to get a first-hand look at the training, I enrolled in the class taught by Officer Dennis Gleason and his partner, Bill Scully. The course covers two days and involves classroom instruction and simulated real-life police confrontations. The classroom instruction looked easy enough. Bring his hands back and you want to place these right over top of his wrists. But looks can be deceiving. Okay, no problem. Just do it again. See what you did. There's no way that that would swing around there. I did eventually learn how to handcuff, how to handle my gun, how to stop suspicious vehicles, and how to search a building for burglars. But learning and doing are two different situations. Tomorrow, we'll show you how officers meet the unknown inside a darkened building and make life and death decisions in less time than it takes to say your name. Uh, we made it. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> but you'll remember, Bob, when we left you last night, my partner and I were searching a darkened building looking for burglars. We'd been shot at by a shotgun and rifle and had arrested one suspect. We thought we were finished. We were wrong. In the hail of gunfire as we entered the pitch dark room, we focused on the flash of light from gunfire 20 feet ahead of us. But watch these flashes of light. These shots are coming from the side and behind us, not from the front, where we found our bad guy with the shotgun and rifle. Instructor Dennis Gleason was hiding in the rafters behind us. He probably would have killed me and my partner. Pretty good job overall. Chris Cross, you kept yourself low targets. Uh -huh. You worked well together. Communication was good. Uh -huh. You got the bad guy targets that were wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, got the bus on backwards. <laughs> yeah, well, put it on. <laughs> the last phase of the survival training is something that looks very routine. Car stops. The situations here are based on actual police experiences, like this one. We've stopped this car for running a stop sign. Oh, 
offer backup. Put the guns down now and let us see your hands. Hi. Even though we were only shooting blanks, the stress of the situation makes it easy to make mistakes. I want you to step, step to the uh, right now. Uh, step to, uh, I'm sorry, step to your, what would now be your left? Step to your left. Knowing left from right probably isn't a fatal mistake, Missing a bad guy like we did at the building search is. My partner and I took no chances with this car. We checked everywhere. Well, let's jerk this guy over, Rick. Let's see what he's up to here. This is the last car stop. The driver has only run a stop sign. I uh, see a license and registration there, fella. But watch my reaction when he moves his hands toward his glove compartment. You just stay there. Don't, don't get out of the car. You stay right where you are. Is there anything else no, hey, keep your hands up. Let me see those hands. Let me see those The hands. effect of being shot at has made me a nervous but very careful police officer. Every time he made the move, I know it was for the, for the gun. Yeah. Overall, it was pretty good, though. Well, the training I received greatly increases the odds that I can survive working on the street as a police officer. Unfortunately, the Hamburg Town Police Course is the only one of its kind in this area. Experts say it's the type of training officers in every police department in western New York ought to be getting. Why aren't there more facilities like this? Basically, Bob, because uh, there's a great deal of expense and a great deal of time involved in this kind of training, and most departments just don't have the resources to do it. How expensive is it? Uh, very expensive. You're talking full-time salaries for police officers, maintenance of a facility. It's okay. tough. Good job. Thank Thanks you. very much, Rick. Jack.